Hi, I want to make a quick video on how to set up Savage Worlds uh, for Foundry. Uh, this is just my personal setup. Uh, every GM will have their own based on the modules that they use, uh, but we'll cover some helpful modules, um, how the Git core game system works, and how combat works in this video. So the first thing you want to do is, after you have Foundry open, you want to go over to Game Systems, click Install System, and type in Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. It should pop up after a couple letters. Um, I already have this installed, but you want to click Install, and it'll show up here. Um, every so often, you want to click the Update Check Update button to make sure it's on the latest version. Um, after you have that, we're going to go ahead and create a test world. Uh, I'm just going to call it SW Test. Uh, and then we're going to make sure in game system we pick Savage Worlds Adventure Edition. We can now create the world, launch it, and then join as the Game Master. Uh, this will populate the screen. If you want to learn how Foundry specifically works, that's just checking out the um, How Foundry Works videos that are on YouTube. We're going to be focusing on the Savage Worlds system in this video. Um, first things first, we're going to go over and create a scene. So we're going to go ahead and click Create Scene. Um, you'll notice that by default, it will create a square grid that is one inch um, per square. This is how the traditional Savage Worlds grid works. So this is the default uh, that you'll be greeted with. If you want to change this, feel free to do so. Um, I just like having a grid to look at and play with. So now we have the scene. Next, we're going to talk about actors. So actors are your player characters and your NPCs. Um, you can go ahead and create actor. You get a choice of using two different types of sheets, a character sheet or an NPC sheet. Characters are your player characters, and NPCs are anything that's not a player character. So let's go and make a player character first. We'll call him player one, and create the actor. You'll be greeted with this screen. Uh, here, players can put in their race, what rank they are, how many advances they have. Um, they can choose how many uh, how many points of fatigue um, and how many wounds that they have. Um, if you want to modify their max values for wounds or benny or wounds, bennies or uh, fatigue, you can go ahead and click the cog icon that's up here. It says cheat. Oh, I'm sorry. I meant the tweaks icon that's up here. Um, and you can set the uh, max bennies, max wounds, max fatigue, if they ignore any wounds, um, and if they have any specific edges that help with initiative. And we'll talk about how initiative works and combat works in just a second. Um, skills here. Um, these are the core skills that everyone starts off with. Um, to change any of their values, you can go ahead and click the uh, D4 or whatever the dice is. This will populate this screen, and you can then, six, uh, then you can pick what dice uh, type that, uh, that skill is, whether that's a D4, D6, D8, D10, D12. You can do the same thing with attributes. Uh, you can pick uh, between any of these. The square next to each attribute is the modifier. So if you wanted it to be D12 plus 2 for agility, that's how you would write that. Um, the toughness parry uh, do not get automatically updated. So if you change this to a D10, toughness is 2 plus half uh, bigger. So that would be 7. You would have to manually type that in. Um, if you want to add new tweaks icon that's up here, um, and you can set the uh, max bennies, max wounds, max fatigue, if they ignore any wounds, um, and if they have any specific edges that help with initiative. And we'll talk about how initiative works and combat works in just a second. Um, skills here, uh, these are the core skills that everyone starts off with. Um, to change any of their values, you can go ahead and click the uh, D4 or whatever the dice is. This will populate this screen, and you can then, stick, uh, then you can pick what dice uh, type that, uh, that skill is, whether that's a D4, D6, D8, D10, D12. You can do the same thing with attributes. Uh, you can pick uh, between any of these. The square next to each attribute is the modifier. So if you wanted it to be D12 plus 2 for agility, that's how you would write that. Um, the toughness parry uh, do not get automatically updated. So if you change this to a D10, Toughness is 2 plus half uh, bigger, so that would be 7. You would have to manually type that in. Um, if you want to add new skills, you can go over to where it says Compendium Packs. Um, these Compendium Packs come with the system. They have a bunch of pre-built data from the core rulebook. Uh, in our case, we want to go over to Skills, and we can add in the skills from the Suede Core Rulebook by dragging and dropping them here. If we see something that, that's not in the core rulebook, but we want to add it as a skill, maybe it comes from a setting or anything like that, we'll show you how to make a new skill in just a moment. Um, if we want to do that for edges or hindrances, it's the same exact process. You go over to edges, uh, you click the edges button on the compendiums, and it's populated with all of the core book um, edges. And you can go ahead and drag them and drop them on the sheet. Now, because of copyright reasons, you won't see the actual description here. Um, you'll only see the name and what page number you should see in the core rulebook. Um, but we'll talk about how um, to change this description to something readable in just a minute. If you want to fulfill, if you want to fill these compendiums with your own descriptions, all you have to do is right-click any of these compendiums, in our case, let's say hindrances, duplicate compendium, let's call it filled out hindrances, like yes, it will uh, duplicate that compendium, and now you can go ahead and edit these, um, and you can say uh, bad luck, is bad, 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 or whatever the description is. Click close, and then when you drag that, you'll see that it will show you the description on the newly created, or uh, on the newly created description for this uh, hindrance. Next, you can go over to the description box if you want to set an image for the player. Uh, here, I'm just going to pick uh, an asset that I have. There we go. This is any image. Uh, you can pick a character image, whatever it is, just by clicking this, changing it around. Um, now, we'll talk about how you want to add in items. 
the cool thing that the suede system does is that it makes everything that's not a character, um, that's not a character attribute, into an item. So skills are items, hindrances are items, powers are items, um, gear is items, everything is an item. So if you click the items tab, you click create item. Uh, if you want to create a new hindrance, new power, or a new weapon, everything is done as a new item. So let's create a new item. Uh, let's create a new um, weapon first. Uh, let's call this a pistol. It's a weapon. We want to create item. Uh, maybe it does 1d6 damage. The range is 5, 10, 20. Rate of fire 1. Maybe it has 12 shots. Maybe it can pierce one armor. It is $250. Uh, and it has a weight of 3. Um, D4. We just created a quick pistol here. And then if we wanted this player, or then for this uh, hindrance. Next, you can go over to the description box if you want to set an image for the player. Uh, here, I'm just going to pick uh, an asset that I have. There we go. This is just any image. Uh, you can pick a character image, whatever it is, just by clicking this, changing it around. Um, now we'll talk about how you want to add in items. The cool thing that the suede system does is that it makes everything that's not a character, um, that's not a character attribute, into an item. So skills are items, hindrances are items, powers are items, um, gear is items, everything is an item. So if you click the items tab, you click create item. Uh, if you want to create a new hindrance, new power, or a new weapon, everything is done as a new item. So let's create a new item. Uh, let's create a new um, weapon first. Uh, let's call this a pistol. It's a weapon. We want to create item. Uh, maybe it does 1d6 damage. The range is 5, 10, 20. Rate of fire 1. Maybe it has 12 shots. Maybe it can pierce one armor. It is $250. Uh, and it has a weight of 3. Um, D4. We just created a quick pistol here. And then if we wanted this player, or this character, uh, to have this pistol, we could just drag this item over here. Uh, and you can equip it by clicking this Equip button. When an item is equipped, it'll show up in Quick Access, and you can see it here. If you wanted to roll damage for this item, all you have to do is click this Damage button, and you're good to go. If you want to make this even easier, you can actually drag this uh, to the macro bar here, um, and you'll be able to, you'll be able to click and, uh, and use it. Uh, you'll have to have a token on the board, so if we say, if we go over here, uh, and we make a token by a player like this. We select the token. Uh, it got dark because this token doesn't have vision. We can change that by changing the scene. Um, I just want to give global vision. Save changes. If I click 1, which is a pistol, a macro here, it will roll damage because I dragged it from that character sheet. And it'll roll, and you'll see it pop up here. Cool. What else? If I wanted to create a custom edge, all I have to do is instead of a weapon, click edge, call it dancing, uh, or whatever you like, and I'll be able to make it into an edge. Well, if I want to give this player powers, you notice that there's no powers tab. That's because this uh, player does not have uh, arcane background edge. So if we go here uh, and we click on edges and we drag arcane background, you'll notice that the, uh, there's a new tab that pops up, powers. We're going to go ahead and click edit on the arcane background. We'll say this is magic. And then we'll close this. We'll go over to powers. Uh, and you'll see that you'll be able to add things here. So let's say um, we want to add, we want to go to the powers compendium. We want to add glass. Uh, we want to go ahead and click Edit on Blast, and we want to make sure that this is part of their magic arcane background. You want to do this for characters that might have multiple arcane backgrounds. For example, if I go uh, to Edges, and I give them another arcane background, let's say this one is Miracles, and then I want to give them a power from Miracles called uh, Blind, and I make this like so, you'll notice that there are now multiple uh, tabs that open in Powers for each of their arcane backgrounds, or if I can click all for all of them. Uh, each of these arcane backgrounds also individually tracks their power. So magic, I want to say they have 10 power points for magic, and for miracles they might have 15. Oops, there we go. Um, and so that's how you handle powers um, and multiple arcane backgrounds. Cool. Uh, if I wanted to create an NPC, I create, uh, create actor. Instead of uh, character, I click NPC, and then I would say NPC1, or whatever you want to name the NPC. And you'll see the character sheet is a lot more condensed, but it still has the same information. And just like um, the other one, if you want arcane backgrounds to show up, you have to give it an arcane background edge. Uh, and then you'll get a powers um, section here. Um, you can change all of these just like the other one. And if you click tweaks, you'll be able to uh, tweak the same uh, values that you were able to tweak in the character sheet. There's just a much more condensed way for NPC sheets to take a quick look at everything. Okay. I also wanted to show you how combat works real quick with card initiative. Uh, here I have two tokens. I'm going to go ahead and select them both, and I'm going to toggle combat for them. Then I'm going to go over to the combat um, uh, sidebar. I'm going to right-click it to pop it out, just so I can see that and chat at the same time. I'm going to clear chat real quick, uh, and then I'm going to begin combat. Uh, to begin combat, I'm going to roll initiative for both of them. NPC 1 goes first. They, uh, they drew the higher number. Then I'm going to click next. Player 1 goes first. And then notice at the end of the round, it will automatically draw new initiative cards. Uh, and we can keep going. We can keep going. And it'll, uh, it'll print uh, in order what cards they drew. 
Uh, if we go over to rollable tables, where the action cards lie, and we click on them, you'll see that the cards that have been drawn so far are highlighted black. This means that it's actually depleting the deck as, uh, as cards are drawn. If you wanted to not do that, you can do draw with replacement, which will make it infinite. But right now, by default, it's going to draw with... Uh, it, the, the deck will be finite, so it will run out. Um, and we can go through that by just rolling it plenty of times. Uh, you'll see more and more cards are being filled. Uh, if you want to re-roll, it'll let me do that. Uh, the card deck will automatically reset when it has run out of all cards. Um, and you'll see uh, sometimes you'll draw jokers, just as you would in a regular deck. So that was the basic suede system. Uh, that was a crash course. There's a bunch more you can do with it, but that was the simple crash course. Uh, next, we're going to talk about how we can supplement the suede system with um, some modules. So there's going to be a full list of modules that I cover um, in the description of this video. Um, but in the meantime, I'm just going to quickly go through all of these. And I'm going to, uh, in the game, I'm going to go through each one and how to set it up uh, to use with uh, the suede system. Some are going to be suede specific, like the stack block importer um, and the suede macro symbol. Others are going to be generic. Uh, like the Furnace or Dice So Nice, so you can use them with any system, not just Suede. Uh, so there's a bunch of these that I use. Um, some people use even more, some people use no modules. It's definitely just up to you how you want to flavor your game. Um, you're going to be able to find any of these modules by just clicking Install Module um, and then searching for the module. So like for example, the first one that we're going to go through is the Stat Block uh, Importer. So if you just type in Stat, you'll see uh, the first one pop up, Suede, Stat Block Importer, you click Install. Um, also make sure that you're updating these in a regular fashion, um, just to make sure everything's up to date. Once you have the modules installed, go back to your game worlds, launch the world that you were playing with. Uh, by default, there are going to be no active modules. To activate a module, you're going to have to go to settings, click manage modules, and tick the ones that you want active in this world. Uh, the first one that we're going to activate is the stat block importer. Uh, so we're going to hit checkbox, suede, stat block importer, save module settings. It's going to refresh suede. Uh, it's going to create a bunch of these uh, compendiums for imports. Don't worry about that. Uh, it's because when you're importing a new uh, stat block that has gear in it that doesn't currently exist um, in, your, in your compendiums, it's going to make sure that it adds that there. If you click Actors, you'll see a new button. That's a stat block import. We're going to go ahead and click that. Uh, I will copy in a stat block for Panzer. You'll see it has some description, and this is just copied directly from the book. Um, actor type, you can pick if you want an NPC sheet or a character sheet. I'm going to pick NPC sheet, and I'm going to go ahead and click Import. I'm going to give it a second, and you'll see that the Panzer now showed up. Uh, if I click on the Panzer, you'll see that it added in the um, items here. Now, it will add in the gear um, as well, and I'll show you that it does that in the character sheet. Right now, there's a bug in 0.9.3 of the suede system, that gear that is not a weapon, armor, or shield doesn't show up on the NPC sheet. We're working on solving that, um, but as of now, when you import something, the gear is added to the sheet, it just won't show up. Um, and we can actually show you that by uh, stat block importing Panzer again. So you'll see, for example, Panzer has things like the exoskeleton, which is a, a type of gear, uh, and gas mask, which is a type of gear. And if we click character and we click import, um, add this character sheet, uh, we're actually going to call this Panzer 2, um, or uh, WCU Panzer, just to differentiate it from the other one. And we go to Inventory. It has a bunch of gear that uh, that imported as well, with the cor uh, correct description. So this is an easy way to import stuff that's in the suede books into your game without having to manually put everything in. It gave it the right skills, it put in the toughness, armor, uh, everything you could ever want in, uh, in importing that uh, character. Cool. So that's how the stat block import works. Um, if there are any errors, you can report it on the GitHub. Uh, and then let's go on to the next module. The next module we're going to try out is the Suede Macros. There's only two of them right now, uh, but the author is working on more. Um, let's go down and put a check mark here. These, uh, the current two modules, uh, the current two macros that are in this, if we actually go over here uh, and go to Suede Macros, uh, they're for shooting and damage. So let's go ahead and add those to our macro bar. Uh, we can also give access to these macros um, to the players by clicking the Macros directory, right-clicking this, and clicking Configure Permissions. All players, and we can give them Owner or Observer permission. Uh, observer should be good enough, and they will be able to drag these macros to their um, to their hotbar as well. Um, so instead of these, I'm going to actually drop two panzers in. Um, and I'm going to modify them such that they always show their name. Cool. So if we click on the panzer, we'll see that it has a MG34 with a rate of fire 3. Now normally, rate of fire 3 means that I would have to be rolling 3 shooting die. Um, but if I go to shooting here and I click roll, it'll only roll it one at a time. This is not that great. Instead, if I click on this panzer and I click on the shooting macro, it will actually pull up all of the weapons that this uh, panzer has equipped um, that have uh, that are ranged weapons. So in this case, this panzer only has one weapon, which is the MG34. It'll tell me how many shots it has, what the rate of fire is. I can fill in information, like the target cover. We'll say the tar uh, target I'm firing at has no cover. Uh, it's at short range. I'm going to fire the full uh, rate of fire 3. 
Um, and I'm going to take the two recoil penalty, so we're going to do minus two. Uh, no multi-action, and if there are any other shooting modifiers, go ahead and fill that out. I'm going to click fire weapon, and it's going to uh, notice that uh, it fired the entry 34. It's going to print any notes the weapon has. This is useful if your weapon has something special about it. Uh, if you're in a setting, for example, where you do heavy damage or uh, maybe it freezes your target, you can put that in the notes of the weapon, so they'll print out here. The other really cool thing is that it will automatically track ammo. So you'll notice the ammo for the MG34 was actually 50, and it reduced it down to 40 because the way a suede works is a rate of fire 3 means that you expend 10 bullets. It'll tell you what you rolled, which was 5, 6, and 2, and the total modifier, which was minus 2, and the results. Um, so basically, the, and this is the rolls with the modifier, and you get 3, 4, and 0. Um, one of the other cool things this will do is if you use a wild card, so in this case, um, this, was, this is a wild card character, or actually we can even make this Panzer a wild card, and then we do the shooting roll again. So this is the same. This is the same character we were doing a shooting roll for. The shots have gone down. This time it's a, a wild card. We're going to go ahead and rate a fire three. Um, you'll notice this time it also rolled a wild die, uh, and it will print out the results there. Um, and again, the shots were automatically deducted, um, and it will track ammo for you. As you do that again, um, boom, boom, boom. I'm trying to find a roll here where the wild die is different, just to show you that it will, in fact, um, for the results, take the wild die if the wild die is higher. So. I'm just uh, rolling bad wild die here. So it's, it's always just going to pick the uh, top three highest die or as many rate of fire that you have. If you fire less, if you fire one uh, rate of fire instead of three, then it'll only deduct one ammo and so on. Now, firing the gun is great. Uh, but what if I have hit? So I've uh, rolled these two, five, and one, and I actually hit my target. How do I do damage? How do I roll damage for this target? Well, first things, I'm going to target, uh, I'm going to select this target as a target. In foundry terms, that means right clicking and clicking this button. This means that I'm targeting. Next, I'm going to select the panzer. So this means that this panzer is targeting that character. Next, I'm going to go click this damage macro. Again, it's going to show me all of the weapons and what damage they do that I have. It's also going to show me the target toughness. It'll show me the target toughness is 14, armor is 6, um, and what are the notes about the armor? For example, in this case, we know that this armor, the panzer suit, reduces the damage by bullets by 4. What that means is, um, I'm going to, in my other damage mod, go ahead and write minus 4, because I'm firing bullets. My MG34 fires bullets. I can choose if I have the drop, which will automatically add a plus 4, or if I want to roll bonus damage at this time. Um, I do not. So I'm going to go ahead and roll damage, and in chat, it will show me the, uh, I did not deal enough damage, there were no successes. Uh, let me roll that damage again, this time without the modifier, just to show you that we can hit this. Still nothing. Wow, we're doing really badly. Uh, let's go ahead and make this toughness a little bit easier to hit. Uh, we're going to make this 4, and if I... There we go. So in, in this case, when, when uh, I can actually hit it, it will uh, not only tell me that it's a success, but two raises because the damage dealt was 8. Um, the damage dealt is the damage rolled minus the target toughness, and uh, it'll give you a little readout for all of that information. So that's uh, that's the suede macros. Right now there's only the shooting and damage macros. Uh, there are plans for more of these to be added um, in future updates, so look out for those. Uh, but in the meantime, let's go check out our next uh, module. Next module that I think is really cool is called Token Mold. Go ahead and check that. Click Save Module Settings. Refresh. Uh, don't show this again. Token Mold, if you go over to Actors, you can actually click Edit. Um, and it will do a variety of different things. First of all, it can create um, random numbers and adjectives for your tokens. Um, I don't like the adjectives, but if you like them, you can leave them on. Um, so let's go ahead and save and close. Uh, and we're going to drag the NPC1 here. And you'll notice, if I show you the name, the token name is gratis NPC1, and then it'll have, uh, have a one byte. If I drag another NPC on the board, and we see this um, token, shapeless NPC1, two. So this will randomly give them names. Um, this is one of the features. I actually don't like the adjectives, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that, but I do like the numbering. This means that I can have multiple panzers, and they'll, they'll all have different uh, numbers. One of the other things that I really like about this one is that um, you'll notice that every time I rolled a NPC onto the table, I have to manually go and click show name for them. We can actually modify the default config of all of the tokens that we rolled. And in this, I want to go to display name. I'm going to overwrite all of their tokens. I'm going to change it to always show, save and close. And that means every time I drag any kind of, oops, I have to switch this toggle on for overwriting the config. But anytime I drag any kind of NPC onto the board, it will automatically showcase their names. So this is just something that I find useful. It's totally up to you how you use it. Finally, the third and most powerful feature of um, a token mold is the stat overlay. Um, I find this really useful uh, for easily showcasing toughness, parry, and pace. So you can pick an icon. I, I just picked the shield icon for toughness. And then go down, and we want to do stats toughness dot value. Next, we're going to do, let's say, uh, parry. So this is going to be parry.value, and then finally we want um, pace, speed.value, um, and then we can save and close, and when we hover over any token, you'll notice it will show me the token's toughness uh, and armor, it'll show me the parry, and then it'll show me the um, the pace. So this 
all the tokens will have this overlay, and I just find that useful when I'm running a game. I can just hover over a token and get that information without having to click open anything. So that's token mold. Um, I definitely think it's one of my favorite modules um, that I have active because of this token overlay. Um, and with that, we'll go on to the next module. Uh, the next couple modules I want to show you are just quick utility modules. I'm not going to spend too much time on them. Uh, compendium Hider lets you hide compendiums in your screen so you don't have to look at them. Uh, deselection allows you to quickly deselect by just clicking anywhere um, on the screen. So if I have something selected, and then I, uh, you'll see right now I'm trying to click, but it won't deselect it. Deselect will allow you to do that. Um, easy target will mean that I can do alt-click to uh, target a token instead of right-clicking and then clicking this target button. Um, ping uh, is another really nice one. It means that when I hold my click down, it will create a ping. Um, and search anywhere will allow me to search for... Um, any kind of anything that I'm looking for by uh, doing a keystroke. So I'm going to save these module settings. I'm going to show you all of these kind of together. So ping will do this. Uh, deselect will let me easily actually do deselection, which is what you would expect to happen. Um, I have my search anywhere configured to control F, but you can change all of these things in the module setting. And then I can search for, say, if I search for pistol, if I search for uh, Panzer, and it will allow me to um, open the reference. Ooh, that's not going to So Panzer open. There we go. And I can quickly, if I have tons and tons of things, it'll let me quickly go through that. Um, easy target. I can alt-click on something uh, to target it. Uh, yeah, I can target multiple things um, exact, uh, just like that. Um, and if I click somewhere else, it will deselect things. Uh, was there any module that I missed? Oh, Compendium Hider. So I remember how this works. Manage Modules, or uh, Configure Settings, Module Settings, Compendium Hider, and then I can pick which ones I want to hide. So I want to hide all the suede import ones because they are slightly ugly. Uh, and I click Save. Uh, and I go here, and you'll notice that these com the compendiums are no longer there. They're still in the world, and modules can still use them. Uh, they just won't show up in my compendium thing here. We went over pings. Um, you, can all, you can go through the settings, and you can set a bunch of different things for all of these modules, um, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. The next module I want to cover is something called Dice So Nice. Uh, if you like 3D Dice, this is the module for you. Go ahead and select that. Click Save Module Settings. Now, if we go to any of these and say we want to roll Athletics, and we click Roll, it will actually roll a physical 3D Dice. Uh, if I want to roll um, the damage on this MG, uh, it will roll these physical dice. Um, it's just a player experience thing. Uh, if you don't care for that, you can leave that off. Um, some people like it, some people don't. Uh, it won't work with the damage and shooting macros, but it should work with everything else. Um, okay, let's go to the next module. Next module, let's talk about the combat utility belt. Uh, this is going to help a lot of different things. I'm not going to cover all of the things that the combat utility belt does. Uh, I'm personally just going to cover one thing that I really like about it. Um, so one thing that I really like about the combat utility belt is if we go to settings and we go to combat utility belt, uh, computer, select gadgets, uh, and we want to enable enhanced conditions and output to chats, and we want to output during combat. And I'll show you what this does in just a second. You want to go ahead and save gadget settings. It will create this thing called condition lab. Uh, this is one of my favorite things. For Condition Lab, you can go ahead and create your own conditions. And so uh, say I want to create a condition for aiming, uh, plus two, uh, two shooting rolls. And I pick an icon for it. Um, I have some assets already created in user data. Um, icon, status, aiming. There we go. Um, and I, I just made uh, a quick thing about her. Save settings. Now, if I click on any of my tokens and I click uh, these uh, status effects, you'll see a new status effect pop up that says aiming. I can assign it. One of the cool things that happens is, actually, if this token is in combat, I'm going to pop out the combat here, and I'll add this to combat as well. Every time it's this uh, guy's turn, it's actually going to print out. So we're going uh, to restart combat real quick. Um, there we go. Begin combat. Every time it's this Panzer's turn that is currently aiming, it will print in chat what the active conditions are. This is so, so nice to keep track of all of the different conditions or all the different things that you are doing. And you can go ahead and configure all of that with icons and stuff in the condition lab. Uh, that's one of my favorite things. Um, you can also modify or re-roll. I didn't cover this in the combat um, uh, part of the video, but if you want to modify what somebody rolled or re-rolls for somebody, you can go ahead and do that. And they can pick if they want the new card or old card. That's pretty easy to do. So that's a quick overlook of the Suede system and the custom modules that I personally use. Um, you, as a GM, will definitely have your own list of modules. So don't feel like you have to use the ones that I use um, or you want to use more or less. That's, you know, it's however you want to play your game. Um, to learn more about the Suede system, ask questions, um, be part of the discussion, I highly recommend joining the Suede channel in the Foundry Discord. It's a great place for asking questions, recording errors with any of these modules, etc. Um, and I highly recommend it. Um, I hope this video was helpful to you, and if you're considering buying Foundry and you wanted to see um, what does the Suede system support and what doesn't support, I hope this answered some of those questions. Um, yeah, I hope this was helpful. See ya!